Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today, back into our game of War of the Pacific Admirals Edition, this is our Let's Play by email with the devilish Mr. Laudrick. And it is now March 13th, 1942. This is going to be the combat resolution, March 13th and March 14th of 42. And uh, Laudrick has already warned me that we may hear from Tokyo Rose this turn, which means something has fallen. Uh, we'll have to figure out what. Well, we won't have to fig do much figuring the game will show us. Uh, all right. Uh, other than that, he's moved into Mole Mine, so he's uh, right over by Rangoon. Uh, he is very close to Surabaya and Batavia. Uh, he's moving all over the map uh, with uh, great aplomb. So we shall see. And let's get it going. March 13th, 1942. Had a pa I had a brain freeze when I was saying the game. I mean, how many times have I said war in the Pacific? But we're off. Lodrick loves to taunt me when uh, Toki he knows Tokyo Rose is going to come blaring. Now, we won't hear that. I don't have the volume turned up uh, just because of these combat resolutions... I, I talk too much, let's be honest, but uh, there's not a whole lot of sound effects to this game, obviously. All right, there's the SS Cachalot out there, but of course it is found by a Japanese PB, I would assume. Yep, it's an ASW attack, so the Nikki Maru uh, finds the Cachalot. Uh, nobody gets hurt out there, though. Going through all the phases. Now, I, I guess I should say, if you're not as familiar with this game, uh, when the Japanese player takes certain strategic locations, such as Singapore uh, and several others, Port Moresby, uh, it's probably what he took this time is Port Moresby, uh, Tokyo Rose will come over the loudspeakers and uh, tell us what a wonderful job the Japanese are doing. It's like nails down a chalkboard for me. Nothing yet. Just going through all the logistic type phases. Now we're going through all the sightings. These are all of our recon naval search aircraft uh, reporting back what they're seeing. Guess I should move that out of the way. All right, he's moving a lot through the Oosthaven Strait. And we're seeing quite a bit up by Suva. Uh, yep, looks like his carriers might be right up there by Suva. I don't know if you saw that. It happened very quickly, but uh, I'm sure we'll see more of them here in a moment. Uh, 25 Sally's uh, in on the group that, uh, or the stack that is west of Yunnan. Okay, 69 casualties on the ground there. And then he's going to bomb this group in the southeastern part of China, as he always does. Uh, one damage Lily. Doesn't look like there were any damages on the ground. That was light cloudy weather, so he just missed. Probably has some new bombardiers out there training. Uh, okay, he's got about 50 bombers coming in on that group again. They probably won't be so lucky, but they are. All right. One more damage, Dan. No casualties on the ground. 12 Oscars sweeping over Changsha. Nothing happening. Uh, Sally's out over the group east of Yunnan. Again, we're trying to get into this hex and cut that rail if we can. Uh, these are essentially doomed soldiers anyway, so we may as well have them do something productive. 25 Sally's come in, 14 casualties on the ground there. You can see we're retreating out of Mole Mine up to Pagu there by Rangoon. You really get to know uh, Asian geography when you play this game. 18 Sonyas in on this group uh, that uh, is trying to get out of the southeastern quadrant of China here. We're trying to get them up here. They're part of Third War Area, which is sitting here at Hang Yang. 
Uh, they've gotten knocked all around the map, and now they're finally free, maybe, hopefully, to get up there. One damage, Sonya, 27 casualties on the ground. Nine Sonyas come in for a second bite at the apple. 29 more casualties on the ground there. Now our troops are calling in with what they're seeing over the top of them. And you see our B-25 Mitchells, we've talked about these a couple of times. I left some of them up in Java, and you can see we've got an AK in our sights. Uh, it did shoot a little anti-aircraft there. Come on, hit a damn ship for once. Uh, nope, we missed them both. So there was an AK out here and an AKL. Uh, which is a smaller civilian uh, cargo. This is civilian as well, but it's bigger when it's AK. Uh, B-25C Mitchells, five of them in. They're not particularly good. They drop six 500-pound bombs from 6,000 feet, and they totally whiff. Uh, well, we had them right in our wheelhouse. Now, we're running missions out of Rangoon. I decided to do this. Uh, these are our planes down here obviously we've got some flying tigers we've got hurricane 2b trops and we've got some hudson's coming in here he's got 34 fighters all told so we've got 11 fighters he's got 34 uh zeros and oscars i'm trying to bomb these ground troops down here and just start to try to get into that game we just haven't been able to do that yet now all five hudson's get past the cap screen there uh, but they're going to get chased out. Let's see if they make it. Uh, let's see what we see here. Uh, one Oscar was destroyed. Okay. Uh, one of the Flying Tigers, the H-81s, was destroyed. So one-to-one -one on the fighters. Uh, one Hudson was destroyed, and three were damaged. And we also lost one 2B Trop. So all in all, we got the worst of that one. Japanese... They took six casualties on the ground. Well, we made it through. We made it through. So our first, uh, well, maybe not our first, but one of our first uh, successful bombing runs of the game. But uh, Lodrick very smartly, when he moves ground troops into an area, he, he gets cap over the top of them, as he should. Now, you may say, why aren't you doing that in China? Well, I'd love to. I'd love to. We just don't have the plan. I mean, we don't have fighters uh, really, you know, uh, you can move fly the Flying Tigers over there, but they were over there and they got ripped up uh, by the better Japanese pilots early on. Um, and then you just really don't have, I mean, you can put I-15s up, which is what the Chinese have. They're not good. They don't have good pilots. Most of those have been destroyed at this point. I did put some of them up. Um, he's got a lot of activity happening right down by Suva. Now, we've seen a couple of submarines. Uh, I believe, I mean, we saw definitely saw a surface fleet. We just don't know exactly what it is yet. 15 Nels now bombing up here in Sumatra. So this is the group we have in Madan. Uh, he also has troops here, and so we damage one Nell, but we take 140 casualties on the ground. This is another place. There's just no way for us to have fighters protecting, and you can see the power of having cap over your troops, right? I mean, he's just getting free bombing runs, 32 casualties on the ground for us there, and then more Nells in, 29 more casualties. So those all add up, obviously. Uh, that was, you know, probably 150, maybe a little over 100 casualties all told. Uh, 38 Bettys in on these troops. Now, these troops were trying to get down to Milne Bay. They had been kicked out of Buna. All right. So now I'm trying to take them all the way down. To, then they came over to try to get into Moresby. Didn't work. Now I'm trying to get them down to Milne Bay. Six casualties reported on the ground. We did damage one Betty there. Five Tojo is going to sweep over Wu Chao just to make sure we don't have any air action here in the southwestern part of China, and we do not. All right, our troops are sighting more aircraft now. Well, our Mitchells are going for another run on it. Now, the, again, I mean, we've got a free clear run on an AP here. For the love of Tampa St. Pete, let's hit something. Uh, you know, we're putting them in the right positions. And again, we just, we do, you know, they're not good enough bombardiers. And even from 6,000 feet, we miss with six 500-pound bombs. So we had an AP. We also had a destroyer in our sights there. Uh, you know, I'm glad I've got them there in the right spot. 
Uh, we've had a chance. I mean, those Mitchells now have missed uh, three transports total, I think, uh, which could have really, I mean, if they would have hit all three times, and who knows what the chances of that, you know, would be probably less than 5%. But if they would have, I mean, that really turns the tide of that invasion a little bit. Uh, but no, no, when I say turn the tide, it wouldn't ultimately stop it, but it would certainly slow him down, which is really what we're trying to do. All right, he's landing at Morocco, which is that uh, base right on the tip, the northern tip of Java. Uh, the AK here, he's got a bunch of ships that are here doing bombardment. We take nine casualties there at Morocco. Uh, four coastal guns fired, but we do no damage. And now he's unloading on the beach. Okay. We'll see if we get any ground combat in the land move attack phase, which happens very late, of course. Uh, let's just see how big this army is, and it is massive. 32nd Division, 35th Division, 116th Division. This is a massive army that he's got here. Uh, he's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 full divisions out here. Um, <laughs> wow. I mean, that is really something. Uh, well, our little base force is not going to stop that, so he's going to kick us out of this base here at Kung Chang. Uh, we're going to have to bring a lot. Yeah, and that base force just said, screw it, we're out of here. Assault value, 7310, 215,000 troops he has out here. We have got to do something different now. Uh, as far as, you know, partisan war, there's just nothing we have that can stop that. Uh, Japanese bombardment down here, southeastern China. Uh, okay, uh, nobody gets hurt that we know about. Maybe somebody got disrupted. Now he's attacking into Surubaya. Let's hope we can hold. Okay, he reduces our fortifications to a three. So we did hold. We were at a four. Now we're down to a three. So he's got the advantage on us, and you can see it here. 25,000 troops to our 20,000, mainly Dutch troops, right? He's got 268 guns. We have 129. He's got 335 vehicles, though, which is going to make a big difference. 829 to 456. Once you put it all through the algorithm, 729 to 348. He takes us down to a fort level three, but we do hold. He takes 429 casualties. We take 1,101. But just given the size differential of the forces, it's only a matter of time at Surabaya. And now he is moving north uh, up the way here. He's at ANSI. Uh, ANSI, I believe, is worth 20 or 30 points. So, I mean, it's not insignificant. Um, and he has made a de you know, definite play to come straight up the road here and get 20 or 30, 20 or 30, 20 or 30, all the way up the the road here and so we're gonna have to get more out there we took 603 casualties at that location um okay he is gonna take Tarapo this is we were trying to get over here from lay he sailed around and landed here and now he's taken Tarapo this is pare pare uh, and he is going to take that. We have nothing there. All right. Uh, now he is attacking at Madon. And you can see what that bombing did to us. We've got a fair number of forces here. But he's, you know, he's bombed us so much that these guys just don't have a whole lot left. Uh, they're going to try to get out of here to Sebolga. And we'll just have to go running down the road and try to outrun him. So I said, I wonder if there's any land, you know, movement this time or land attacks. Uh, yeah. Yep. So now we're expanding at Blenheim, uh, someplace up in Alaska. I didn't see the location there. And 
that's about going to do it for March 13th, and it will, in just a moment, be March 14th. It's a very rude uh, day for us there. Uh, we have Mitchells just in the perfect spot and missed uh, completely whiffed on an AK and an AP and a Destroyer, uh, so that's too bad. You can see I'm still overdue on that ship withdrawal. That's going to haunt me in my dreams. Um, like I said, it's Joseph P. Dickman. He is in the tubes on his way to Perth. Or, no, Melbourne. So, I mean, that's going to add up quite a bit more of kind of kicking myself for that. But ultimately, it's just a regiment that uh, we won't be able to buy out. You know, or it'll take us longer. Uh, the Queen Mary is in now. Uh, we saw those Kitty Hawks go into Australia. We've got some new stuff coming into San Francisco. Port Wainimi, which I live about 10 minutes from. Um, the, the Soviets are getting stuff. That always pisses me off. Like, ah, can't use it. I, I've never played a game where the Soviets actually got activated. It'd be fun. I'd love to look at their forces and see what they have over here. I mean, I guess I could look at them. I've never taken the time to do it. There's enough stuff to worry about um, when I can't worry about like actually doing anything with their troops. Okay, he just occupied this base here, Endon. Um, three ships at lay. I'm really curious to see if he's going to be bombing down around Suva this time. Because I, I thought those were carriers, but it's, but it's possible he just brought a couple of battleships down there to snoop around or maybe even a, just a cruiser group to see what we've got. Maybe using them as bait to uh, try to lure our carriers out. Uh, that's certainly something he may be doing. Okay, uh, Japanese sub down off of the coast of Australia. It runs into an AM. I'm not sure who found who. Uh, we found him. Excellent. Okay, so I had this AP uh, transport ship that was up here at Sydney. I thought it was a little exposed. I didn't have anything to take out of Sydney, so I decided to bring it around to Melbourne, a little more defensible over here. I took him with an AM, so a, you know, a local minesweeper, but that has ASW ability, and sure enough, we found the SSI-21, and we hit it. Nice. Okay. Our depth charges work pretty well. Uh, are we going to try to hit him again? Is he going to hit us again? Uh, we hit him again. So that's the second hit. Uh, hopefully he won't be able to limp all the way back home. You know, that, that kind of damage. We didn't see, we wouldn't really know if there are heavy fires or anything. Uh, we just report the hit. And who knows? Who knows what damage he's sustained, how far he'll be able to you know, get back to the home islands or wherever he's basing his subs right now. Could be in Manila. Uh, Japanese players often like to base their subs in Manila, uh, but it could be going all the way back to the home islands, certainly. All right, it is indeed March 14th. We spotted a float plane south of Suva. So he's, again, he's got some kind of surface fleet down there, but we have no idea what it is. You saw that we reported two ships south of Victoria over by Canada. Uh, that's got to be a misidentification. I don't think he's just got two ships over there. Uh, our B-26, yep, here we go. So his carriers are just south of Suva here. Uh, we're going to be putting up Aero Cobras against these Zeros. That's probably not going to go too well for us. Um, but at least we've got Cap there. You know, I mean, at least we've got something. Uh, Aero Cobras, we... You know, we've got those dime a dozen. Um, you know, look, we're going to take our losses here, but that's fine. We're letting him know, you know, it's no easy, just pure easy pickings on our ships anymore. We have cap over Suva. We destroyed two zeros, all right? And we have five Aracobas destroyed. 
again, you know, I would say that's actually kind of a win for us. These zeros that are flying off of his carriers have his best pilots, his best planes. Um, these are just kind of generic era Cobras. I'll take it. I'll take it. You know, it's not a perfect uh, result, uh, but eh, we'll see what we do the second go around. <laughs> Here he comes again. 18 more zeros over the top of Suva. And now he's just flying free over there. We had one Era Cobra destroyed. So now it's six to two. Uh, he's destroyed six Era Cobras. We've destroyed two zeros. Again, I'm not overly upset by that result. I mean, well, that's okay. 24 Sallies now west of Yanon. Uh, one damage Sally, 84 casualties. Now Oscars over Changsha. Okay, nothing much doing there. We're spotting over Pagu. Probably only a matter of time before he's bombing Rangoon, you know, pretty steadily. Now that he's got a ground force headed that way. 18 Sonyas here. Uh, one damage Sonya. 66 casualties reported on the ground. Okay, nine more Sonyas. Again, that's that group trying to get back to Heng Yang. Uh, we take 10 casualties on the ground this time. Okay, uh, he did find a task force here. So we had a task force. When I saw these move through, I started trying to get him the hell out of here, this task force. Uh, but we've got some tankers. It is a big tanker task force that was moving through here. And he jammed in here just at the right time. We damaged four Kates and two Vals. But we have got a destroyer, the Mori, on fire, the Gridley on fire. Now, the destroyers aren't that big of a deal. They're like five or six point ships. These tankers, though, hurt. They hurt their high point value ships for what they are. Uh, the mobile fuel is sunk. The Larry Donahue, or Doheny, that sounds like a stand-up comedian. He has got heavy damage. We got heavy damage to the mobile station, and the LP St. Clair is also sunk. And so that is... That hurts. That hurts. Now, every once in a while, you're going to get a tanker group that gets hit like this. And with two-day turns, I just didn't have time to get him out of here. I knew he was coming down here, uh, but, I, you know, I turned him around. They're just not fast enough, and he can move so quickly around the board, and he's doing a good job of it. So we lose two tankers at least, but, I mean, they're going to finish off the other two. Uh, you see the Gwyn goes down. The mobile station goes down. The Doheny goes down, so we've lost that entire task force. You know, we've got a lot of tankers. It's not really about that. It's about the points, right? Um, 28 Nels in on this group that's fleeing from Madan. So they've been kicked out of there. One damage Nell, 29 casualties reported there. 12 more Bettys on the attack here. And five casualties reported there. Now, if we can hold that carrier group coming all the way out, he had to have come from the home islands, uh, you know, kind of coming from that direction, uh, because to have the amount of fuel he would need, he would have had to go back, refuel, potentially at Manila, but probably to the home islands. Um, if that's all we lose from his foray down into the South Pacific this time, I won't feel as terrible about it. We've just got to make sure that we can't lose anything else. I, I, I tried to turn everything down there around, uh, had things scrambling like crazy, but he did get that tanker force. One damage, uh, Betty here, 76 casualties on New Britain. Lots of bombers into southeastern China here. Uh, two damaged planes, seven casualties on the ground. And he's going to hit them again with nine ands. And this time, nothing. Okay. Uh, sweeping over Wu Chao. And he finds nothing because we have nothing there. It's interesting on those sweeps. He's flying at 16,000 feet every time. Early in the war with our Warhawks, they are best at 15,000 feet, as are the Air Cobras. I mean, pretty much all of our aircraft are best at 15,000 feet. Um, hey, look, the Mitchells got up in here to Singapore. Now this, oh, 
we caught a training mission out here. So he he had some quads out here training. He also has 71 zeros there. Now, I probably would have appreciated if, if our commander decided not to fly right into the teeth of him at Singapore. Now, we only lose one Mitchell, which is probably a miracle. We must have gotten a good dice roll. Uh, we are again trying to bomb down here at Mole Mine. Same setup here, right? He's got 38 or 13 Oscars, 25 zeros, 38 total. We've got four Trops, two Flying Tigers, three Hudsons. Probably not going to go particularly well for us. Looks like we lost a few things there. Uh, he loses one Oscar. We lose a Flying Tiger, two Hudsons, and a Hurricane 2B Trop. Okay, well, that's not great. Uh, we lost four planes. He lost one. We probably need to call those off. I need those planes to be defensive, and I think we'll just have to get the Hudsons out of here. I was hoping to catch him. Now, we talked about this last turn. I was going to stop those bombing runs, uh, but I thought I'd give it one more shot uh, instead of just playing defense all the time. Eh, you know, we lose some planes, a few planes here and there, uh, but... You know, it's probably time to call that off because he's got overwhelming fighters. He very quickly got fighters into that sector, into that zone. And uh, we're just not going to have any luck even getting to his troops. I, what did we cause, like six casualties the first time around? So I think we're just going to have to call those off. All right, land move attack phase down in southeastern China. This is just bombardment from the Japanese. They bombarded over and over down here. Uh, it's, you know, they haven't caused that much disruption. Now he's attacking Surubaya again. And really the big force here is just this one division, the 48th division. Uh, can we hold on? Gosh, I hope so. But he told me that Tokyo Rose was going to be talking. Hello, you and fighting sure enough, orphans of the Pacific. This is your favorite scuttled, enemy, Orphan Anne, at Radio at Tokyo. With music to lift there. your spirits and words so to depress that, your morale. But first, Imperial Some General Headquarters announced today and that... And that the, the ever-victorious forces uh, of the Japanese Empire have captured Surabaya. Kind of losses we took there. So it ended up being 868 to 156. Uh, we had some aircraft on the ground, a few Catalinas, a 339D, a couple of, tw or one, no, three DO-24Ks. Uh, okay. He took 334 casualties. We took 9,827. Well, that's going to happen when he takes over Java. There's no other place for these troops to go. Uh, you can't buy them out. or It would be a waste of uh, your points to buy them out. And even if you wanted to, you couldn't buy them all out. So they're eventually going to surrender or you know, become a casualty somewhere. Uh, I would have liked to see them put up a bigger fight, certainly for Surabaya, and I'm really hoping... We've got a much bigger force at Batavia. I decided to put them there this game. Uh, you can pick one or the other. I put more at Batavia in this game, and I'm hoping that they can hold for quite some time. We'll see. You know, it's March 14th. If we can hold them into mid-April, that would be fantastic. We'll see if we can do it. And that's going to do it. That's the end of March 14th. Overall, just not a good turn for us. The Mitchells missed. Uh, we had a tanker task force that got caught out uh, by his quick-moving carriers. Now, again, if that's all we lose for a full carrier soiree down into the South Pacific, we can live with that. But we got to keep it there. We lost some Air Cobras uh, at Suva. I was not upset about that. I mean, they let us, you know, they, they did what they're supposed to do, which is fly up over Suva so he doesn't destroy the air base. Uh, that's, you know, he didn't send any bombers this time, but now he knows that we've got quite a bit of aircraft there. Um, you can see everything coming in. Uh, we got the formidable, the new British carrier that is coming in at Cape Town. But he did take Surubaya, and uh, we took about 10,000 surrenders and casualties there. So, womp, womp, womp. Uh, all right, well... Let's hope for a better turn next time. Uh, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I'll talk to you then. Have a good one.